right, so without a doubt, the stock of the day was Boeing, also known as the poster child of President Trump's misguided notion of forcing smart and free trade with China. Well, of course, it wasn't known as that today because the stock soared significantly higher. Now, coming into the session, conventional wisdom was to sell all these opening pops as good news uh, because, well, let's face it, they said it couldn't get any better than this. Now, I don't believe this is Orwellian groupthink or a Pavlonian reaction. Instead, I just think the herd is being manipulated. Lots of investors today selling, pushing the Dow down to 200 points lower. Then buyers emerged, triggering sharp reversals to the upside. The Dow turned up 200 points, Netflix 14 points, Amazon 45 points. And then, of course, after the close of Parade of Earnings, stocks that are rocketing higher. Uh, Facebook beating on revenues, posting earnings, $1.69 beating the street uh, by a large percentage. And by the way, revenue per user surging. Visa also had a great number beating on both the top and bottom lines, allowing management to raise their full year financial outlook. And then there's Chipotle Mexican Grill. Maybe the turn on has begun. That company saw revenues in line, but earnings of $2.13, 36, 36 percent better than consensus. That stock is taking off. So are we at the so-called high water mark of the market, or are we just now learning to deal with the new realities of the market? Joining me now to discuss, Melissa Armo, the stocks uh, of stocks who's back with me also, Carol Roth and Shaw Galani. All right, Melissa, Yesterday, this, you know, the, the Caterpillar exploded up 4%. Then it crashed after the CFO said this was the high water mark. I don't know. Obviously, didn't, you know, take any media training. But is this the high water mark for this rally? <laughs> I think it's the high water mark for the rally, but I think in the next few months we're going to see continued selling because I don't think we're going to see new highs this summer. So we can't not move. We've been in this range already for two months and everything just looks so heavy. All the banks are gapping up on earnings and selling off. Even Caterpillar, like you said, that is a massive sell off bar that had happened yesterday. eBay's down tonight. I know Visa's up like you were talking about on Facebook too, but they're not up enough. Tomorrow night is a big night for the, for the market. Amazon. Amazon reports on Microsoft too. They both really have to do an big way to move this market up. Carol, uh, I, 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 I'm pretty sure they'll beat. Uh, I'm pretty sure they'll guide higher. Uh, but there's something else gnawing at this market, right? I think there is. I think that the market is trying to get a handle on, you know, not just the good news, but where the forecasts are coming from and which companies are going to continue to deliver. And I just think that there's some indigestion that is going to be in the market for a little while. Uh, if you think about where we were at the beginning of the year, not a lot has changed. So if you were bullish at the beginning of the year, not a lot has changed other than sort of these, uh, you know, mini temper tantrums that we're having in the market. So I think by the end of the year, it sorts itself out. If you're a long term term investor I think that's what you need but to think about time, but if Carol, you're a trader to go sideways it right is. yeah but, uh, but it, it, it is, but you have to be patient as an investor. That's the whole point of being long-term, that you can't try and time every top and every bottom for the market. That's where you get burned. You need to be patient, and when you find good entry points, get in at those good entry points and have that long-term vision. Well, well, Shaw, are we seeing good entry points? And when a Caterpillar is up 4%, then it goes down 11 bucks, or, or, or Boeing gets hammered because of you know the saber-rattling between President Trump and China. Are, are those are, are those the buy signals that we're looking for? The market doesn't think so. Uh, I think some of them could be excellent buy-in points, but the market doesn't think so. So that makes me cautious because if the market on good news isn't really reacting well, and we're getting some very stellar earnings reports and the market's not reacting well, I think the, the larger narrative is that interest rates seem to be rising. We got the 10-year rising at 303. We got the two-year uh, at 250. We got oil at uh, WTI at 67, $68. So we've got this inflationary feel. Yeah. We've got this feel, feeling that yields are rising and then maybe we have seen the best of it, but I don't think we have. I think by any stretch of the imagination, what's going to break, the this, market's what's gonna break us out of this tight range that you're talking about? What I mean, you say in the towards the summer in the middle, and what's the catalyst to get us out of this? Where would I say you could buy again comfortably? Well, yeah, and, why, and why? What would be the catalyst that breaks uh, the market out of this trading range? Some significant buying where we have some follow through. I mean, we haven't had any follow through at all. I mean, a little bit of a rally, a one day rally. We gap down in a rally. That's not what I call strong. I want to see strength. I want to see. I want to see Amazon gap up and rally and go all day. That's what you want to see. Like Facebook now is up tonight. That sucker better go all day tomorrow. That's what you want to see, and you're not seeing it. Carol, you agree. And by the way, do we need leadership beyond just technology stocks? 
<laughs> we do need leadership beyond technology, and I think that we need to get the, away from the narrative of um, crossing the th the the ten year yield hitting going past three percent. I think that that's really um, has been a big issue for the market. But there are a lot of counterbalances, which doesn't mean that that is going to continue to go higher and higher and higher. So I think that a lot of the news that's in the market is not going to be long term focused for the market. And when it does get its footing underneath it, that is when everything's going to head back up again. All right. Well, the quote of the night, that sucker better keep running. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much. Report surfacing now that Rudy Giuliani is taking over talks uh, with Mueller about a possible Trump interview. We're going to have the details on this breaking news right after this.